Page two of discrete random variables. Um, one, the discrete random variable B has a probability distribution function given by capital B equals small b equals k times four minus small b. Um, I know this might be confusing, this notation here, but basically the important thing is the right side, not the left side. So you look at this and you say, okay, this is like the probability of little b happening. Okay, and the probability of little b happening depends on the value of little b in this case, and the little b could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And then k is the number you're looking for. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I got these three things that might happen. And um, you could label this uh, b capital B in this case, but it's not a big deal if you put little b, okay? And then you put uh, the probability that that thing is going to happen um, for each case. And how do you find that? You substitute in the value for b. So you put in like small b here, and then we'll put 0 here, and then we'll get k times 4 minus 0, which is 4k, right? Then you put in 1. If you put in 1, it will be 4 minus 1, which is 3, so it would be 3k. And then we'll put in 2. If you put in 2 here, it will be 4 minus 2, which is 2, times k, which is 2k. And finally, if you put in b, little b equals 3, then it will be 4 minus 3 equals 1, 1k. Okay, so we know that the probability that 0 would happen would be 4k. The probability that 1 would happen would be 3k, and so on. Now, how do we figure out what the value of k is? Well, don't forget that really simple rule from the investigation that all the probabilities have of the sample space have to add up to 100% or 1. So these add up to 1, which means that 4k plus 3k plus 2k plus 1k equals 1. And so we just like do a little bit of algebra here and we add up 4, 3, 2, and 1k and we get um, 10k, right? If you add up 4, 3, 2, 1, you get 10. You're adding up the like terms here, you get 10k. Then you set that equal to one, you solve for k, which is gonna be, if you put on the calculator, be one divided by 10, which is 0 0.1. So the k value has to be 0 0.1 so that all these values become uh, numbers which are going to add up exactly to 1. So if I put in uh, point 0.1 in for k, I found out that the, the values for each one of these, or the probabilities that each one of these are going to happen are 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.1 respectively. And what do you know? That adds up perfectly to 1.0. So that is why k has to be 0 0.1 in order to scale each one of these four probabilities so that they perfectly add up to 1. Okay, so that's a really popular type of problem on the IB exam. Okay, let's go to the next one, number five. Alexandre is designing a game. A spinning arrow rotates and stops on one of the regions A, B, C, D, as shown in the diagram. Alexandre proposes that the prize is shown in the table and the game should cost $5 to play. Determine whether Alexandre's game is fair and justify your answer. Okay, so on this one, um, what we're doing is we're seeing if the game is fair. What does that mean from a math perspective? It means that on average, the game pays you back um, the exact same amount of money you put into it. Okay. Uh, so in this in this particular case, uh, you're not putting any in game any money into it. Oh wait, no, you are putting you're putting five dollars into it. So it has to pay you back on average five dollars. Uh, otherwise, it's not fair. Okay, so the game pays you back three, seven, five, or two, depending on whether you get A, B, C, or D. What we need to know now is what is the probability that each one of these happens, and then we do a multiplication between the value it pays back and the probability it happens, and that gives you a weighted average about whether or not it's, it's going to pay you back an average of $5. Okay, so let's see. For A, B, C, D, the prizes are three, five, seven, 
Oh, three, five, seven, five, two dollars. Three, seven, five, and two dollars. Okay. And the probability of each one happens can be calculated by looking at this spinner. So the bigger the spinner section, the more probability it has. For example, this would be 50%, right? This would be 25%. And these two would divide 25% in half, so it would be 12.5% each, right? And then we just need to convert those to decimal. We do that by moving the decimal point two places, so it would actually be 0.5. 0 0.25, 0 0.125, and 0.125. So let's write those probabilities down for A, B, C, D. So A would be 0 0.25, uh, B would be 0.125, C would be 0.125, and D would be 0.5. And then remind you of um, in the past, we've had something that kind of looks like this, slightly different. It's called a frequency table. Do you remember that? So the frequency table has an L1, which is the data, and then it's got the L2, which is the um, the number of times it happens. And in this case, it's not exactly the number of times it happens because it's not a whole number, but it is representative and proportional to the number of time it happens, although it's a decimal. Remember, probabilities are like frequencies except for they're scaled so that when you add them all up, they add up to 100%. So they're, they're less than one, which is obviously not a whole number. So you can solve this. Find, you can find the expected value of the mean of the amount that you're going to get back from the game every time by using the same uh, strategy that we use to find the mean of the frequency table, which is uh, one of our stats with a frequency list. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this into L1 and L2. 3, 7, 5, 2, in for L1. And then we're going to put the probabilities, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.125, 0 0.125, and 0.5. And then we can do stat calc one var stats. Remember, it's one var stats because there's only one variable with a frequency or probability. It's not two separate variables. We only use two var stats when we're working with both an X and a Y. And in this case, we are not. So our frequency list is going to be L2. And then when we calculate it, we'll find out that the X bar value is 3.25. So it pays back 3.25. Um, dollars each turn which is less than five dollars which means that it's not fair in fact um, it's not fair in the other person's favor you're losing a little bit of money every time because you're paying five dollars and you lose three dollars and 25 cents so it's not fair because the payout for each turn is less than what you put in Makes sense, right? And you can analyze things like the uh, lottery, the Brazilian lottery and other things to figure out if those games are fair. And of course they're not fair because the idea of a lottery isn't to make people into millionaires. The idea of a lottery is to make the government money. So of course the government is winning money on lottery tickets. Um, okay, so number seven, the two fair tetrahedral, two fair tetrahedral, Hedral dice with faces numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 are shown. The discrete random variable D is defined as the product of the two numbers shown. What's a tetrahedral dice? It's, it's this kind of dice, if you've ever seen it. Uh, the number that is on the bottom of this dice is the one that it rolled. So if the 4 is on the bottom, that means it rolled a 4. And we're going we're gonna to roll two of these dice. So we're going to get two sets of numbers between 1 and 4. The discrete random variable capital D is defined as the product of the two numbers shown. Find the probability distribution table of D. Okay, so let's go back to the probability unit. And in the probability unit, we figured out sample spaces such as these. In this case, it is a four by four sample space because basically we have, um, we have two dice and the red dice can roll uh, one through four and the green dice can roll one through four. And then based on that, we are going to get uh, these combinations. So we could get one, one, we could get one, four, we could get three, two, etc. right? 
So these are the, all the combinations. There's 16 different combinations we can get. Um, let's see, the uh, actually the word is permutations, not combinations, but it's not important. Uh, find the probability distribution table of D. So D, remember, is not the combination of 1, 1, 1, 2, etc. It is the product of the two numbers shown. So to see what the product is, I'm going to make a another table similar to this, except for I am going to actually write the numbers instead. I'm going to write the products instead. So I'm going to rewrite this table. And I'm going to put the products in here. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, etc. 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 4, 8, 12, 16. So these are the values for D, okay? And if we were going to actually make a table for this, we would put all the possible uh, results, one, two, three, four. Okay, I moved it over here because I didn't have enough space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how many times each one of the products occurred in this table here. So, for example, um, let's see. In the case of one, it only happens one time, right? So I'm going to put one here. In the case of two, it happens two times. So I'm going to put two here. In the case of three, it also happens two times. So I'm going to put a two here. And then in the case of four, it happens four times. So that would be three. In the case of six, it happens two times. And in the ca case of eight, it happens two times. In the case of nine, it happens one time. In the case of 12, it happens two times. In the case of 16, it happens one time. Okay. So we currently have a frequency table, not a probability distribution table, where the uh, the first one is the D value, the second one is the frequency. What I would like to have is the probability, and the probability is similar to the frequency, except it's scaled so that it adds up exactly to 1, and in, the, in this case, the frequencies add up to what? It adds up to uh, uh, 16, right? Because there's 16 there's 16 numbers he, uh, here, so if I add up all the frequencies, it adds up to 16. So I can find the probabilities by dividing each one of these numbers by 16. So I could put 1 16th, 2 16th, etc. So that would be how I would find the probability distribution table. And of course, if I divide each one of these numbers by 16, if I add them all up, it would add up perfectly to 1. Okay? Um, so in the next step, it says, find the probability that D is a square number where D is less than eight. Okay, so basically what that means is I wanna add up all the probabilities above this. Oh, I'm sorry, not, it's less than eight, not less than or equal to eight. So actually it would be all the probabilities above here. So that would be, it would be 1 16th plus 2 16th plus 2 16th plus 3 16th plus 2 16th. And if you reduced your fractions, you'll find that, oh man, now it makes it easier, and then now it makes it harder to add them up. So don't reduce your fractions when you're doing a probability problem. We talked about that during the probability unit, that it's better just to leave them unreduced, right? Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10 16th. So the answer to this one is 10 16th. And the way I got it was I just added up probabilities that were in the probability distribution table. In a CAS, oh, CAS, oh, this is a this is definitely an IB uh, book because they know that everyone knows what CAS is. In a CAS fundraising game, a prize of uh, $12 is one if D is odd, and a prize of $6 is one if D is even. Find the price of the ticket to ensure this is the this is a fair game. Okay, so first of all, we're going to highlight the cases where we get uh, an odd number, which is the yellow numbers, and that's when we win $12, right? And then the other cases, which are um, the white numbers, that's when we win uh, $6, okay? And let's figure out the probability that we get one of the yellow cases and one, the probability we get one of the white cases, and then we'll, we'll do uh, a weighted average of 12 and 6, okay? So let's make another table. And this table is going to have our, uh, we're going to have the odd case, and we're going to have the even case. And then the odd case, we win $12. And in the even case, we win $6. 
what is the probability we win $12? It would be 1 16th plus 2 16th plus 1 16th. We'd add up the yellow cases. That would give us 4 16ths. What is the probability that we would win, uh, that we would uh, get an even number? It would be all the other cases. You could either add up all the white probabilities, 2 16 plus 3 16 et etc., or you could say, oh, I know that it's the opposite of the, the yellow case, so it's 1 minus 4 16th or 16 16th minus 4 16th. That would give you 12 16th. So either way, you could just add up all the white probabilities and you'll get 12 16th, or you could subtract the yellow probability, 4 16th, from 1, and that would give you 12 16th. So we have the, the winnings and we have the probability that you get those winnings. We could find the, the weighted average of this using stat calc two var stats. So we're going to go, or stat calc one var stats. So we're going to go in here and then we're going to, uh, clear L1 and L2. And then we're going to put in our new L1 and L2. And our new L1 and L2 is going to be 12 and 6 for L1. Uh, 12 and 6, not 1 and 6. 12. And on the in the p-value, I'm going to put 4 divided by 16, which is 0.25. And I'm going to put 12 divided by 16, which is 0.75. Oops, 12 divided by 16 can't type really fast on this computer because it's just so slow. Stat calc 1 var stats, L1, L2, frequency list is L2, and my x bar is going to be 7.5. So my average win, or my the amount of my average amount of money I win each turn is going to be $7.50. So it asks me Find the price of a ticket to ensure that this is a fair game. Fair game means it pays out exactly what you put into it. So if it pays out an average of $7.50, the price of a ticket needs to be $7.50 also so that you get back exactly what you put into it on average. That would make it a fair game. Okay. All right. So that's it for this page.